one. The MegaCon in Florida that had the cheer cheerleading convention, boat show, and anime. Oh, convention. I remember the that. The we cheerleaders were, were, were comparing makeup tips with the anime kids, and it was amazing. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, which side are we starting? No, I, nobody, <laughs> but we end up being the mod. Okay. Shake your head. All right. All right. Bill. Hello. Um, welcome. And um, I'll introduce myself first. I'm Bill Holbrook, the creator of Kevin and Kel, the longest running webcomic daily since 1995. Woohoo! Yeah! I'm Comfort. And I'm Adam. We make the unique Rainbow in the Dark. We did a big how-to book for Random House called The Complete Guide to Self-Publishing Comics. We do all the stuff. We both write, both draw, both color, both letter. We're the two-headed hydra of comics. Also, if you're looking for more stuff to support for the Arthritis Foundation, we have a big set of like full color prints, like not like that it's color, but every character of the rainbow on red, orange, yellow, it's in the auction. It's beautiful. Go see it. So go support the Arthritis Foundation. But uh, we're here to talk about comics, guys. What an adventure this is going to be. Um, my name is Jenny Breeden, and I uh, do the Devil's Panties. Woo! Great! Devil's Panties! Yeah. Thank you for coming. Good night. Good night. All right, so the way that we usually do this, honestly, is... We just dive into your questions because you guys are here because you want to make is the comic. That's what I hear. That's what I assume. Who? And we all have um, different Some experience. Yeah. Yeah. Different yeah. points of view and stuff like that. Exactly. Different so, eras and stuff. So between the four of us, we may answer your question. From a show of hands, who uh, has an idea for a comic? Keep them up. Who is doing their comic? That was a different hand. Okay. I, doing the hand. Okay. I don't yeah. have any ideas, but I'm hard at work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, wants to. Yeah, I, I wanted to get gauge, you know, how far along. Uh, so idea, but haven't actually, like, posted, printed. Uh, who wants to do a print comic? Oh, nice, nice, nice. No, okay, no. digital. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no. Yeah, okay, yeah. well done. Well done. Yes, no, doing the boat, doing the boat. Uh, do you guys have a different... Because you guys were doing uh, webtoons, so there is definitely different publishing yeah. and yes. how to make money from it sure. avenue. That is correct. Do we yeah. do? Do we just want to start with that? Do we, do we talk about making the comic or making money from the comic? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Let me. Well, theoretically. Hello, Courtney. Well, there there is that Bitcoin thing where you just get no! the money and then you just make the thing. Uh, or the Kickstarter thing. If you get the money and then you actually have to do the thing, but I already got the money and I spent it. <laughs> yeah. oh, no. We wanted the music man. Uh, let's just have people raise their hands. What questions do we have? Oh, I, unless there's no questions. Come, yeah, come, come to the, the mic. mic. Anybody with... Uh, topics you so, would like to so cover. so i make money from patreon kickstarter yes. yes a couple of pennies from advertising that i need to get rid of because they keep doing pop-ups on my phone I, I hate it it's driving me so i need to stop doing advertising uh income um and and a little bit com from conventions so i do have print books that i sell on my website but i think conventions is the print book sale okay question hi um so i'm currently in the process of you know fleshing out my ideas for mm -hmm. comics um i'm currently working on a shorter fan comic based off of an ex obscure movie um to kind of like get back into the hang of making comics because i've like been on hiatus for so long uh how would you go about like planning you know, your story, and how long does planning usually take? Adam, you want to do this one? You never stop planning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> planning, it depends on what you want to accomplish. Depends on the scope of your story. Some things take a long time to get all the pieces in place. Some things fall together in a weekend, and you pretty much know exactly what you want to do. Yeah. Um, I think that you want to approach every story based on 
thinking about what you want to do with it, right? How far do you want it to go? Most times you can get a sense, uh, and, and if not, you should try and develop this uh, ability to get a sense of, with the story I want to tell, this is about how long it probably needs to be to get that mm -hmm. done. Does it feel more like a movie or more like a TV show? Does it feel like one of those like three season guys or is this something that could just go and go and go? Like figure out for yourself what kind of length, what kind of duration it might take to do the thing well, to fully get the idea out. Uh, and from there, you start breaking it down into chunks. Mm -hmm. You've got your big idea, your big plan, your beginning, general, middle, your ending. Let's focus on this part right now and flesh that out a little bit more. And, you know, just continue chunking down. You, you're down to your okay. first third. Okay, that's about three volumes. Start with volume one. Okay, that's about, you know, three to six issues. All right, issue one. And further continuing to piece it down until right. you have a manageable bit. But in finding the manageable bit to start writing, you have had to define all of these Larger other terms. right now and what that does is it gives you a sense of uh, a roadmap because a lot of people go into writing and like i you know over here and here right this is going to be somewhat different because the way they do their you know daily stories is very different from us we do you know long form narrative stories so we need to know ahead of time what it is that we're doing and what that does for you is when you're setting out to do your big epic or your medium epic or your small epic you have a sense of where it is that you're going so you're not just being like and i'm going to write it once upon a time uh what happens next right the plan the roadmap is how you make something not just good but great now, be prepared for one thing. You may have a roadmap, but the characters may right. decide to veer <laughs> off into a completely another direction. And they'll start talking to you and say, no, I want to go over here. It's often good to follow them. Spike from Buffy was supposed to be a one shot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was supposed to just be one episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, you said based on an obscure movie uh there is inspired by and there is page with the fanfic on it. of the okay okay because yeah you you had mentioned the the fanfic uh there is definitely mm -hmm. some legal stuff because I, there was a there was a novel that was a fanfic it started out as a fanfic and then they did like a one of the are you talking about 50, 50 shades of gray yeah. <laughs> like that's a whole like yeah 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 dragon one draco or whatever it was but oh i know i'm not gonna make money yeah. off of the fan yeah, yeah you're just trying to find an audience there is one um, gentle warning i'll give about doing fan works because on the one hand i'm very much in support it's a great way to cut your teeth great way to work on something where you're just honing your structure because you already know your characters. You already know your setting. You don't have to do the world building stuff. You're just <laughs> playing with your action figures at that point, right? Yes. Um, however, the one thing to be cautious about is it can trap you. Uh, there's a friend of ours who I won't name to spare him the indignity, um, but he did a webcomic that was a take on a very significant property and it became extremely popular just an absolute runaway yeah. smash success mm -hmm. and he was like awesome uh, now here's my original thing and nobody cared uh, <laughs> they wanted yeah. him to just keep doing the fan work forever and he still does because that's the thing because you know we're in a social media era where you can gain a certain amount of support through you know clicks and advertising right. like you can kind of make that work patreon makes some things possible that wouldn't have been possible for but he wanted to do more. He had a lot of stories he wanted to tell. And at a certain point, it we, pigeonholed. It just, that's, he was stuck. He was like, guys, I don't know that I'm ever going to do these other things. So, so that's just the heads up. But I don't think like that's always the worry. I think, you know, you can do this and generally be fine. So the only way you're really going to learn it one way or the other is doing it. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. yeah, all that being said, yeah. you should totally do yeah. it. Yeah. Whatever yeah. gets you going. I mean, the fan comic is just like a one shot. And the fandom that I'm writing for is actually very, very small. Sure. Mm -hmm. Great. Some, sometimes I've niche that, fandoms can yeah. be the most rabid. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. See, everybody in here just <laughs> you're all thinking of a different niche fandom that will pay top dollar for content that supports them, 
I'm not mm. talking about furries, but I could be talking about furries. <laughs> <laughs> Lot, well, not yeah. anymore. It's what been mainstreamed mean? somewhat in terms of percentages. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily large either. Okay, let's uh, let's get another <laughs> question. Is that good? Anybody else have a question? You got to come over Step to the up. mic because they want to record your, your voice. Yeah. Hey. Hi. Hi. I've talked to you guys already. Yeah. Hi, Pink Lady. Uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've done a couple comics that I've printed, uh -huh. um, but I've been talking with my editor about my current book, and she suggested putting it on Webtoon first. Yeah. So do mm -hmm. you have any tips for Because I'm still planning to print my current project, yeah. but also put it on Webtoon. Oh, so... are you talking to the right people? OK, good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> do yeah. you have any tips for taking yeah. something that I'm drawing and writing primarily for print? Yes. but adjusting it for the format of webtoon may, may i take this the one? first thing i want to say is you're doing it the correct way yes you are doing it the way mm -hmm. that it needs i will to be let done. my editor know that yeah. that is correct thank yeah. you yeah. <laughs> when you are working for both print and digital which i recommend um we both recommend. yes we both recommend um highly i i think it's better to think in terms of what the final form of your product will be because you can edit that and bring it into a digital thing versus the other way. Like it's God. harder. Right. We, we've seen a lot of uh, very big, big and successful webtoons <laughs> that do print versions that just don't look very good. No. Because they were not designed with print in mind. Mm -hmm. And so translating the vertical scroll into the page read doesn't always work and it undercuts the art and it can undercut the storytelling. Right. I, I dare say I've never seen one thus far that looked more than fine yeah. and passable because it looks great on a webtoon because it was formatted for that but then you try and put it on pages and it's a nightmare. Yeah, it becomes do. a mess. So how do you then transfer your print thing into a digital format? So what we would do is we'd take the pages sans dialogue right because you're lettering in your illustrator whatever it's a separate layer a separate file or whatever right you're not going to letter physically on your page make, that make this a note that you should not be lettering on your actual page, page. ever no matter what people of you a certain the age might tell you they're they don't I mean, know what they're talking it's not that it can't work but you want it's, the flexibility. Yeah. You want the flexibility, and especially if you're going to do it and you're taking it from print to digital, those are two very different things. Now, when you say letter on the page, you mean that there's a separate file. There's, there's, a, separate, there's, there's a separate, separate file. 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 Right or a separate, separate layer, layer, layer if you're yeah, doing yeah. it in, say, like Clip Studio or something. Yeah, like I was that. sitting there going, shit. <laughs> ah, <laughs> you have, have a very different, different world. But also a different about. layer. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, um, I would okay. even recommend keeping separate file like keeping an art file that is just the art even if you're using the same program like if you're lettering in clip studio or something keep a separate file that's there just in case anything should happen and you accidentally merge your layers and <laughs> save them merged you always have the original untouched art file somewhere that you can access right. always always have a backup yeah. okay so anyways what you're doing basically in a nutshell is you are taking your image files that are just your images you flatten that you're going to be copying, pasting your images into a vertical format for make yourself, webtoon. Make yourself a file that is set to the dimensions. But then clients. bring your DPI up. Bring the DPI up. Yeah. High DPI yeah. because it's taking like a big DPI image and making it smaller looks awesome. Taking mm -hmm. a smaller DPI image and making it bigger looks awful. Right. Um, and you never know when they're going to change the DPI. Like we've been doing this so long that like we used to do panel slides and they would be like 72 DPI, 800 pixels wide. And that looks terrible now. <laughs> right. I have so. an anecdote of so in 1998, I didn't understand what DPI was. Mm -hmm. So when I started drawing the comic in Dots 2001, I was saving mm -hmm. my archived originals at 72 DPI. Oh no! A year of daily comics were this big. And then I got a publisher and we went to print and I went, uh oh, I had to redraw 365 comics for my first book. So now the first book has a lot of bonus content. 
<laughs> it's great. I got to rewrite shit yeah. all over the place. But yes, that learning experience of the DPI, the mm -hmm. you know, print big and, and online. So, so always have that large. Yeah. Always have the large version. Yeah. So if I'm doing for print already, like I'm already at a high, like right. a 600 yeah, yeah, yeah. But even for the uh, the web format, go bigger than you think you need. That way and you're a little bit future-proof. Yeah. If they change their format, if Which they, they change, will. it happens. Mm -hmm. Screens get better. It's just the natural law of technology. That way you don't have to redo this stuff later. Right. And then, So set it up, set up your file, and then you're just pasting panels in and arranging them where they look. Okay, like so that. I'm going to say one more thing on that because I know this is complicated. You're not pasting your files in like perfectly just one for one, one for one because the screen is a whole lot smaller than your page. So if you've got a wide panel, it looks like a freaking postage stamp. Yeah, it looks awesome. So you're going to have to put it like you've in got, parts. So you've got, a, you've got a wide screen panel, right? Yeah. You will put this section in and you know whatever dialogue should happen to go there and frequently we find that you cannot fit nearly as much dialogue on a webtoon panel as you can on a book panel so even if it's a regular panel with normal dialogue we will often have to redo the dialogue to fit webtoon because right. the format just and we chunk it up too because the readers so, boom, hate reading on web boom that's a second panel and boom that might even be a third panel depending on how right the we can goes. even show people like i guess we don't have a screen projector here but if you come to our table we're in artist alley table 430 come over i will show you yeah. the difference between the printed page and what went on there mm -hmm. and we can just show you the page difference mm -hmm. right exactly also we have like little paper doll heads that we use basically like the characters sure. and we just change their clothes and have like reaction shots that we just pop in because because again sometimes there's not enough like the art text, content mm -hmm. the right. text the way it fits on the screen for your phone you have to make it large enough to read which means that one bubble on a print page might become a couple bubbles on a webtoon panel and if that happens you know over a period of a full several pages sometimes you'll have sections where there's so much text on the phone screen that there's no image left right. so we have a set of stock heads that we can throw in redress adjust the hair whatever that take just a little bit of time that we need to pad out the images a little bit so that that text can be a little more comfortable and they're not having to read like a homework amount of text when they get to a panel you know <laughs> things like that there's little stuff that you start figuring out over time about how to make it comfortable for a phone reader Mm -hmm. that you didn't have to think about when you were thinking of a book reader. So anyways, we'll stop talking because it's like, this is like yeah. what was the Harvey P. Carr movie? Mm. American, American Comic Splendor. Splendor. American yeah. Splendor. It, it's the beginning of comics in the 60s and Harvey P. Carr and who's the Rick Crumb? Our Crumb. Yeah, Crumb. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we, <laughs> we did college papers on that. Oh. Um, there's a scene where he's working with a writer and the writer has this word balloon and it's just text. There's like 20 lines of text in this pair up in this. And Harvey Picar is there sitting there with an eraser, erasing all of the pencil going. There's just too much text in this word balloon. It's just too much text. And whenever my husband writes some of stuff and he sends me a script and I'm like, there's just too much text mm -hmm. yep. in this, in this word balloon. I can't, you have to yeah. break it up. You have to break it. We do mm -hmm. one to a half sentence, a half sentence mm -hmm. to one sentence. And that is maybe yeah. it. When we were designing a character, when we were picking a name for a character, it has to be three letters. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, my comic is a two year delay on my kids. And I had to name my kids for the comic. <laughs> and we were trying to pick a name. It's hard enough to pick a name for a kid right. in the hospital. I don't, we had, uh, yeah, that's less thought goes into that than you think. Sorry. But I turned to my husband and said, no, no, the comic's coming up about the birth of our kid. We have to come up with a name and it has to be three letters so it can fit in the word balloon. I, I like Cliff test what i call the cliff test for a good name is i imagine if one character fell off a cliff the other dove and screamed that name how does it sound Ooh. Right? No, does no, it sound I, good i did the yell at the kid across the playground similar their full yeah, names similar. you gotta get the full name and does it stop them in the track and yeah but it, for that one you might include the middle name as well oh, no. if you it, want it, full it, name, it, it, yeah no no 
All right. Thank you anyway, so much. You're welcome. You. Uh, let's get another up at the microphone. We've got somebody else coming up. Am I right? Wrong? We, no, we have okay. two hands. We have Anybody hold on. Here, come on. Come yeah. to the we microphone. Can, we can form a line and go through you as we go. To be fair, I have a character named Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, <laughs> and I, I was thinking about shortening it, shortening it or like just to Neb. Yeah. 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 There was a really popular Ken recently. I love you. Okay. All right. Question. Uh, how did you suggest getting started? Oh, oh my God. Okay. Now wait. Okay. What's your end goal? What do you want to do? You want to be quite sure yet because I haven't really started too much yet. What kind of story is your story? It's gonna be a long one. Okay. Probably. Okay. Set it to the side and think of a short one. Yes, actually. Okay, we got in a story for that too. So we did like our magnum opus is the unique. And the dream is, if we ever get this done, is 10 seasons. 100 so, issues. 100 yeah. issues. Mm -hmm. And this is something that was very like common back when we were concepting this. Like this definitely happened. We were like, hell yeah, we can do this. And again, we're doing this on our own because we want to say what we want to say versus a publisher tell us what to say. So we start with that back in 2008. We've been doing this a long time, guys. And uh, like we get a certain amount in. And um, at the time, we thought, oh, we definitely want a publisher. And they were like, at the time, superheroes were not cool to be doing. Like uh, It's like Teen Titans if it was an HBO series. Uh, and so everybody's like, this is nice, but this isn't in. How about something else kind of like this? That's going to be really in. And we're like, OK, well, we do want a publisher. And we love what we're doing, but we're going to pause this. And also, it was too much. It was too much at, you know, 100 issues to start off with. My God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do the, the quick version. OK. We pause it. We do a, another shorter book, there you a go. miniseries, there you go. nine issues, done. And it gets very popular. It does very well for us. And you get nominated leads, for Best Graphic Novel of the Year. It's great. Of things, which are all great. And we realize over the uh -oh. course of these years that our initial work on Unix kind of sucked. It wasn't great. We weren't ready. We were not ready for the big book. And mm -hmm. we wanted that to be, we had so many dreams, so many designs. We ultimately have done things with it. However, you don't want to make your dream project your first project because you don't want to make all of your mistakes on your dream project. OK, and so when we went back, when we <laughs> went back to Unique in 2015, because comics take a long time to do, we had to do an extended director's cut of season one because it looked very not good in comparison to Rainbow in the Dark that got all like the excitement and so it was a lot of redoing. And it's a great thing to look at the before and after and all that we've learned. Like, it's great. But it but also it's cost the a lot of time. Worst talk. way to do things. Yeah. So think of a smaller, poppy, fun story. Maybe like you three to six have issues. More yeah. in you. you yeah. definitely have more in you. Cut Nobody your teeth has there. one story, mm -hmm. right? Find something else. Keep your big project on the side. You'll think about it all the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Keep that goal as the fire that pushes you through some of these mm -hmm. other stories. Things you can be passionate about and excited about, but that you can also more easily accomplish. Right. Because it's a lot easier to say like, ooh, I'm going to get you know, a, a five chapter story mm -hmm. done than to say, ooh, I'm going to get a 100 chapter story done. Uh, you want the... Nothing helps you continue working like accomplishment. Correct. <laughs> Finishing things feels good, Word. makes you feel like you can do this, makes it feel real and achievable, and that gets you to keep working. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say, how do I start, do you mean like drawing it or producing it? Uh, like, a like little bit of like posting both. it. Like, would you suggest getting started more online or like starting with like paper? Like, I'm, so uh, I would do all your work digital, well, and, yes, but yeah. in terms of paper release or digital oh. release, digital is free. Get yeah. the get the URL, buy the URL, yeah, okay. buy the URL, post it on the website, and then write on every page that you make that you post on the internet. Put that URL in the art along the the borders, and so if somebody likes the art or whatever, and they share it on any of the other hundreds of social media platforms. They can find they can find it back to that website. 
because the website is yours. Facebook can be taken down. Webtoons can be taken down. Mm -hmm. But everything is still on your website and people can find you there. And then they can, you can spread it across social media. But if it's across social media and somebody says that they like this, make sure that they can find you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I would recommend even if you're starting on a service like a webtoon or something, and even if you don't yet have the ability to make a website for yourself, still get the URL so that mm -hmm. you have it. Nobody else can take it. Mm -hmm. And when the time comes, you're ready to go. So, so the Devil's Panties is my webcomic. Devil's Panties is the fan site because I didn't think to buy that. <laughs> so, so yeah, there's some iterations. Yeah. That, yeah. Oh, whoops, whoops. Okay. Lesson learned. All right, thank you. Okay. Hello. Hi. Hey. Hi. Um. So this is actually my like third time trying to make a webcomic mm -hmm. it's the first time i just went into it no plan terrible idea oh. <laughs> second time i have like a vague outline and a little bit of a script mm -hmm. third time five seasons planned mm -hmm. each with a synopsis seven episodes written i'm kind of stuck on episode seven trying to push past mm -hmm. the rest of it and I have all of these cool things I want to do in my webcomic, mm -hmm. but I'm still drawing episode one. Mm -hmm. And I'm at a weird standstill where I want to do all the cool things, but I can't because I'm still in episode one. <laughs> Is um, there like a sort of way to sort of, I don't know, find motivation to continue this aside from like the very big random plot that happens like in season two, mm -hmm. episode 40? I mean, you're always going to know that, like, you know, Adam and I know what's happening in the last issue, the hundredth episode or issue issue of the uniques, which could be, you know, in webtoon terms, like a thousand episodes, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Chapters, whatever you want to call them. So, you know, you're always going to know. But then when it comes to drawing it, like you do need a structure to say, I'm going to get this much done at this time. And you got to kind of find a way that you stick to it because it's always easy to be like, I'll do that tomorrow. I'll yeah. do that tomorrow. If your problem is that it's hard for you to wait for the stuff you're excited for, you need more exciting stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's I true. Like I'm we had a problem early on where we did a lot of, we did a lot of burying our climaxes all at the end of the season. Uh, and while that makes for a very exciting finale, it means that there's not a lot of big pops along mm -hmm. the way to keep people enthusiastic. Because if you're having a hard time staying enthusiastic about the early stages, mm -hmm. the audience might have an even bigger problem yeah. staying enthusiastic. So, so how do you lay those breadcrumbs that are going to be like, help you? Set the stage for the big ones and see if you can find some good smaller like surprise turns, mm -hmm. some good moments of conflict, some some we like to have thing. per episode, we like to have one cool thing in every one. or our uh, uh, sorry, I do, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, sorry, I take that back. Not necessarily a webtoon episode, if but issues. So Every chapter. Every, every, every chapter big of the chapter. Story has yeah. to have every every cool. 30 pages. Well, that's something. the difference between print and, and online is that in print in a book, mm -hmm. the fight scene can go on forever and the thing can happen at the end of the chapter. On a post, you have to have something happen that's true. that day. Yeah. That, yeah. Post, that one yeah. thing has to have something that happens. Some some kind yeah. of payoff every yeah. day. Yeah. 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 We we had to learn because we had people our our books are very twisty turning, right? There's a lot of interconnecting parts. And it makes perfect sense when you're reading, you know, something that starts at the beginning of the issue and then, you know, 30 pages later, it's like, ooh, that thing came back. You, when you read it in one sitting, it's great. If you have to wait weeks and weeks and yeah. weeks and weeks and weeks to get to page 30, you probably forgot all about this thing. Right. It, it will take somewhere between 10 to 15 weeks to get to yeah. page 30. So a combination of... Finding some more pop moments 
finding some more moments of even little excitement, mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. little character reveals that can be fun. Cute moments between characters. Yeah, that's a people good time. love that. I, do. I love that. It's fun to write. It's fun to draw. Give yourself some more of that stuff. What? And in combination, when you're posting, if you post digitally, yeah, I always do this for the vertical mm -hmm. scroll. Yeah, I can't yeah, yeah. put it this point. Uh -huh. um, when you're posting digitally, get comfortable with previously on kind of intros. Okay. Yeah. So that if you have, like, you, it doesn't make good story to constantly remind people that there's a gun on the table, but people do maybe need to be reminded. So okay. in a previously on, it's the sort of thing that's not going to go to print if you collect it later, but it helps people online in the interim I, stay in I have cards for uniques on Webtoon, and that's the one to really look at because we really learned a lot between starting posting and then like the last you know few chapters that we put on like it's a tour de force of how the hell you do this thing called webtoon we made most so. of the mistakes you could make <laughs> you were having trouble getting uh incentive to get it yeah. done because like i i do feed on my readers i feed yeah. off the air energy and the comments and mm -hmm. when you post it and people respond to it that kind of it was like oh i'm gonna do it now yeah. on the other hand lost did episodes and they would listen to the to the comment and they would change goddamn script i will not and do that's that not though. okay <laughs> no. but definitely feeding off of the energy of the uh, one more thing so you've been doing this yeah. for and how, how long bill uh 40 years there you go. Yeah. How, how do you keep that going and, and what i what i found out is when i'm getting resistant to what i'm drawing to um said i don't i don't want to draw this but, I look at it and say, why am I being resistant to it? And something is not right about it. That, that resistance is coming from somewhere. And usually it's because it's, I've made the wrong choice as far as plot or dialogue or the character. And I need to alter some things to make it more like something I want to read. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, when you guys do make your webtoon, how many pages do you do? Because I have 13, but pages, I know some pages okay. per. So, an average issue of our comic or chapter, if you want to think of it that way, is around 30 to 40 pages. Uh -huh. Because we're insane. Because we're <laughs> stupid. Okay. Uh, because we love our stories, but we hate ourselves. That is correct. Um, on webtoon, one episode of the webtoon is around four of those pages i would um, say anywhere depending on how much is there two to four two to four pages. Okay. every once in a while it'll some be are more two. dense one yeah. would think as long as it takes to get to the point because okay. because that's the thing yeah. and, I've, and i've seen it in webtoon stuff as long as there's a, a punchline or you know right. you can't do a webtoon yeah. pose yeah that somebody making tea yeah, yeah. It, it's scene right. to scene mm -hmm. kind yeah. of thing okay that we so put it's up. not really pages so much as like like getting to the punchline yep. and it's that you have to end on the joke you have to like the end, end on the has reveal to be the high yeah. you know to, to get them in right and mm -hmm. that also helps you when structuring your story because you're making sure that as somebody's reading a full chapter mm -hmm. you're getting these constant little moments of excitement well, every even one scene moment. has a beginning a middle and an end mm -hmm. yeah. And and some of that is just the the comedic thing at the end, or somebody, and and then you have the big reveal, and you can do mix in the happy and the sad and yep. the drama and the but making sure that you end up. Yeah. Okay. All right. More punch. All right. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Right. It's a pickle doesn't have to be a punch. It could be yeah. a pickle. Oh, there you go. Yeah. It could be a gut punch too. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Um. This is more a question for, like, web comic readers. So. For those of us who do not like reading on webtoons mm -hmm. because the scroll gives us motion sickness, <laughs> That's um, how is the best way to find new webtoons? Because I've been reading them for years. A lot of the ones I've been reading have ended, and it used to be I could just go and they had links to other webtoons mm -hmm. that were their friends. I mean, friends and all that. They don't do that anymore. So no. what is the best way to kind of find new comics to follow online that aren't a scroll but have actual websites? I read a lot on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Instagram. And yeah, it, Instagram. And then I have a friend who is like, oh, yeah, I, I she'll comment about my comic. And she only reads it on Instagram. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and it's definitely a husband set up 
a bunch of services that are automatic updates so that when I post my comic on my site, it aggregates to uh, all the places Mastodon, mm -hmm. uh, Blue Sky, Instagram, uh, Twitter, mm -hmm. Facebook, and it's an automatic update on all five of That's those every day. Smart. Oh, because I, I should do that. 20 minutes cutting and pasting and, cutting, oh, and posting God here dang. and posting here. And Instagram with a different size, and so, so if you're looking for more web comics, uh, uh, if you're for promotion for your own web comic hashtags, what are they calling them now? Tags? tags. I guess. Yeah. Where, somebody was like, "Your early comics don't have any tags." <laughs> it's like, yeah, I posted them before tags existed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's interesting to see uh, that gets readers. The algorithm. Mm -hmm. The algorithm. If you have certain kinds of tags for your comic, certain people can uh, can find it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, XKCD, I think, yeah. did a comic about a certain rock, and geologists <laughs> went nuts, and suddenly <laughs> he had an entire following of geologists. Yeah, because he did this little joke about this little thing, and had hash and had a had a tag for it, and so. The way that you're going to find other comics to read, uh, you know, Googling Instagram hashtags, um, definitely the algorithm shows me a lot of Sarah Scribble, and I am fine with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's interesting to see some of Sarah Scribble and some yeah. of the artists. Ah, uh, there's another lady that I, I don't even know what she does because she only posts the first two panels on mm -hmm. Instagram. And if I want to read the punchline, mm -hmm. I have to go to tap, Tapas. 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 Yeah. Tapas. Yeah. And I have to go open Tapas to read the rest of the comic. And so she kind of pulled you in that way. Mm -hmm. uh, and I tried that for a while on Facebook of mm -hmm. only the first two comics, then you have to go to my website. Thank you. You're, I, the, I, that's as good as answers any. It's yeah. really tough because the scroll is just the most common thing yeah. for most of those sites. So... I feel, yeah, I think oh, that's, you know, that's yeah. an engagement. Uh, yeah. Bill, how do you get people to read your comic or find your comic or? Hashtags. Yeah. yeah. Tags. And, and I'd like to have a shout out to Sarah Anderson because she, a week ago tonight, she won the Rubin Award for Best Online Comic Short Form. Yeah. I nice. got to meet her for the first time. Well, I'm a little jealous. Can I touch you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hi. 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 Uh, I got a handful of questions, sure. mostly to help steer discussion in a couple of ways I think can be I beneficial. Um, first question is, uh, when did everybody get started on their comic? With how long everybody's been oh doing it? Oh my gosh. 2001? Uh, 2008. 1995. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so like comparing that to like where you are now, like did you think it took more time or less time than... Or did, was the was the success a surprise? It took just the right amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky. Yeah. Uh, always kind of searching because we're always behind the eight ball because comics, yeah. like long form storytelling comics have gone through so many changes. Like it, it's okay. never, it's never. It feels like every four or five years they complete. And we'll be change. like, yes, we've mastered this. Ha ha, the whole thing's changed again. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. When we got started, you could do really well by promoting yourself on DeviantArt. Yes. Remember DeviantArt? Remember oh, yeah. those? It was an innocent Not time. Dating, right? my friend. Not Tumblr. Tumblr was so good. We got all good. my reference photos off of Tumblr. I would my get other almost comments. anything for 2012 Tumblr bag. Oh. oh, I'd give almost anything for 2012. I'll bag. take that ball. <laughs> take that ball. The world was a different place. But yeah, every every four or five years, platforms collapse, mm -hmm. new ones arise, the entire audience leaves and goes somewhere else. It's like every day you wake up and you go outside and everyone's like, hey, how's it going? And then one day you go outside and there's no houses on the block. And you didn't know they were moving. You're just alone depreciating your property value. <laughs> so you've got to go hop in your car and take off and figure out where did everybody And then you go. find that neighborhood and you're like, this neighborhood's pretty happening. And, and you do that for By the time years. you've got uh -huh. yourself established and they know your name, disappear again. And after a few times you start wondering, is it me? Did I do this? 
I, I got a Substack account, and I have no idea if that's going to go anywhere. And I got a Ko-Fi account, and I have no idea yeah. if that's going to go anywhere. And then I got a Patreon account. That did very well. Oh. Did yeah, the Patreon account. account. And that one burned down and sank into the swamp. And then the third one, the third one. I got one reference for it. So, wait, okay. So the question was success. And do you think you are where I, uh, now, do you think you made it? Man, success is a whole thing. Cause it's a me, bag of cats. I had the first time somebody gave me money. They gave me money on, on PayPal and they just gave me $50. And that was a huge amount of money for somebody to just give you. And then I had to go get my brakes fixed. And that is a very different number. <laughs> much bigger. So, so you're kind of bar of what making it is and the cost of living fucking cost of living mm. oh my god um, just keep going up don't it? Yeah, yeah every that that is the other thing is like we'll be like yeah we're really doing well like we make a good deal of money and then we're like goodbye money yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's it's a hard thing about you know because they, they talk about why why do people feel so bad about the economy even though like inflation's down and wages are up and it's like well it's because back when we were getting started people who made what we make now did well and we thought by the time we would reach the stage where we're earning what we earn, we would be good. That but part. they changed the game. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody so. had a, a comment about how when they were in their 20s, they were there up and coming, early 30s, they were up and coming, and the sky was the limit. That yeah. everything, everyone was, they were getting the awards, and everyone was talking about them, and everyone was interviewing them, and now she's in her 40s. And she's like, where did all of that go? Where I have to claw and do all of that again. And I felt seen because I was sitting there going, wait, I did all these interviews and stuff in my early thirties and now I'm in my forties and now I have to have that same energy mm -hmm. and do the same shill and try to, and and on one hand it is, uh, everybody is, um, what's the word, uh, imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and it's hard and it's hard to think, okay, I've been putting the time in and I should be done. Yeah. A guy came up and said, uh, you inspired me to do my own web comic. And I said, I am so sorry. <laughs> and the next year he came and he said, uh, now I know why you apologize. This is hard. Mm -hmm. I, I did it the first year you realize getting it done is really hard. The second mm -hmm. year you realize getting it done is really hard and you're not getting paid. And the third year, you realize you have no choice in the matter. This is going to happen, whether you're working at Starbucks or not. You're going to go home and do it, and this is just your life now. And, yeah. 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 All right. Good. Cool. I'm going to let other people go. All right. You can come back around, Cody. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, so I have kind of the opposite problem of, of this one over here. Um, mm -hmm. I have a web comic. It's been going for about seven years. Um, Thank well, you. Done. Thank you. Chill it, chill it. What's it called? Uh, beside you. Beside you. Yes, like like the music fun. Beside, beside you. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, I like it. Thank you. Um, so I have many many pages. I have enough for volume one. I have been digging my heels in about actually getting it printed. It's formatted for print. I don't have a publisher. Uh. Um, so I wondered if you had any advice on like self-printing should i do it without a publisher mm -hmm. um, help me <laughs> there is a self-publishing company called lulu okay. that i yeah. recommend highly <laughs> their um, print versions are indistinguishable from any book you would buy from a so-called major distributor um they also pay the creator a fair share unlike Amazon, mm -hmm. um, I cannot recommend Lulu more highly. Um, I think that uh, there's also a really good uh, mm -hmm. publisher called Kickstarter. <laughs> uh, you know, no lie though. If you, if you look at the comic projects on Kickstarter and take them collectively, they are the third largest publisher of comics world i think they might be the first now it's yeah. very possible since all yeah. of the major publishers are now going yeah, to kickstarter I, I, instead. I, I um, would not be shocked and you know as two people who our entire career have self-published everything mm -hmm. we did except for the book on self-publishing that was random house I, um, <laughs> I there are a lot of reasons that we keep doing it mm -hmm. um it's sort of like 
There's a few big reasons not to, I'll be honest, but in many ways it's felt like um, the way I felt about vegetarianism. Like once you stop eating meat, you don't run out of reasons to keep not eating meat. Uh, once you get used to self-publishing, you will keep finding reasons why that's what you want to keep doing. Even when you go work for larger companies mm -hmm. for a minute and then you're like, oh, ah! Nothing makes you happier to self-publish than <laughs> working for a publisher for a while. Good heaven. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, what you can do is do some price checking. Find out what it would cost you to print a book. A lot of print houses have some familiarity with comics. And if not, you can set, like go to them and show like, this is what I want. Can you do this for me? Can you give me this paper quality? Can you give me this print quality? Uh, they want your business mm -hmm. pretty badly. Yeah. And uh, many of them have affiliations with other printers throughout the country, mm -hmm. if not the world, and they can give you quotes from multiple mm -hmm. sources at once. Find out what the cost might be, because you might be surprised. You've been running for seven years. You've got some sense of what kind of popularity you have with the story. You probably have perhaps some sense of how many of those people you might be able to convert to paper sales if you did a Kickstarter. Right. Find out what it would cost. Figure out what then you would have to charge at Kickstarter to make it worth your while to do. And then reduce that price on Kickstarter because you don't want to go, you don't want to go full Monty because nothing succeeds like success. If you can hit your Kickstarter goal within the first few days, your odds of making especially 24 hours. Especially those first 24 hours, mm -hmm. you increase your odds exponentially. Because people, then they're buying an actual product versus product. like an idea. Idea. Yeah. yeah. If you go to a Kickstarter and you're like, that looks cool, and you see that they haven't reached their their level yet, and they've got eight days left, you're like, oh, this isn't going to happen, and you click away. You're not thinking, I could make this happen. You're thinking, nope, this, this is over. So set it a little lower, but not so low that if it succeeds, but not by everything you need, you can't afford to make up the difference. And then so, talk to everybody that you know to make sure that they uh, invest in the Kickstarter yeah, yeah. right away. I mean, so, a whole other don't be polite. How to succeed at Kickstarter. Yeah. But Th that's that a whole a other avenue. panel. It's a for real avenue. Yeah. It's one that people are used to, the audience is used to. You can go anywhere and say, I have a Kickstarter. Everybody knows what that means. Mm -hmm. We stopped distributing mm -hmm. through diamond to comic shops because we would say our pre-orders are up and people would say great when's the kickstarter and we're like no this is what kickstarter was <laughs> they don't understand that anymore but this makes perfect sense mm -hmm. so all you got to say is that one word and everybody's like what's the link yeah. go to uh the to the print on demand stuff i lulu's a great one get get a book printed with lulu see how it looks yes see what it, mm -hmm. get a book printed with uh ingram sparks uh, if you can upload your books to there, just have them there because libraries order from there. Mm. Uh, and then I use KDP. I use the devil, uh, Amazon, um, and I upload it and they send me a book and it costs me $4 for a 300 page book. And then I can see, okay, well, I got this wrong and I got that wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And I keep ordering, keep uploading and ordering until I get a book I like. And then I dance in front of a video camera for the kickstarter saying here is the book it's done the uh the print of the book cost me for a 300 page book cost me about uh four dollars a book i know with shipping it costs seven dollars a book yeah. and so that gives me an idea of and then with with kdp amazon let me pull you over to the dark side they have cookies is that uh it, when you fulfill the Kickstarter, which is the hard part, you have to buy mailing envelopes and print it, and you have to mm -hmm. print it out and get it out with Amazon. On the plane here, I was on my computer and I took the uh, mailing address from the person and put it into Amazon and it's shipped. And the same price to Switzerland is still $7 a book for shipping and everything. And so suddenly my costs are low. My time is mine. It just, it's me sitting on their computers and fulfilling it. Sorry, we got off topic. No, no, no. I yeah. mean, how, do you, how yeah. do you publish? I, I am trying to swing around and looking at publishers going, hey, that looks like a lot less work. Um, I priced them out in my early days and me doing it myself, mm -hmm. I made, you know, I'm, I'm making $15 a book. Yeah. A publisher I was making one dollar a book and it's the same through, thing we had unless the, the publisher yeah. had a san diego comic con release party in which case i never got a penny yeah. 
So, because for the publisher, you get paid after they do expenses. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. publisher is a nice concept. Yeah. Okay. But it was the thing that we learned when we did Rainbow. We were like, oh, we actually don't want yeah, that. Yeah. Once we started yeah. seeing what the comics look like, we were like, oh. You can get mind. famous, We're but you it. won't get a paycheck. Yeah. And with yeah. with print on demand and with doing it yourself, you get a paycheck. And you, I have, I have my Kickstarters. I have three hundred people. <laughs> Every Kickstarter, I have three hundred people that will buy my stuff, and that's and then I make ten thousand dollars for those three hundred people. So that's kind of nice. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. So there you much. go. Well, that's... all right. Hi. Uh, hey. Great panel. What are some yeah. good ways to use social media to create like? buzz or excitement for your project because whether, oh. whether it's a kickstarter you need you need the buzz like everyone has an instagram everyone oh. has a site but how do you get that punch one of my friends is an illustrator and he will do like uh like over the head videos of him just drawing something yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and it's sped up so in like a minute you see him like create something and it's really cool and people are like oh, i want one and then he's able to get like sales of like commissions just for like special projects from that mm -hmm. and, and then it just people want more and then he created it he put it on TikTok, and then it goes even more viral like how can you create that buzz to get people really excited because that will help for a kickstarter that helps for sales that helps links to your patreon it's harder to yeah. do as a writer people don't get excited if you put the camera over your shoulder and just do like fast motion <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah and and I, I will say even as an artist too like those those sites god love them are putting more and more barriers in and you're like sometimes you'll be like wow how is this person getting the buzz and the secret is they astroturf the whole thing because they're a rich child there's yeah. hate for the buzz they yeah hate yeah. for the buzz yeah. hate for a the lot buzz. of social media right now has a lot of barriers that prevent you from being seen by your own audience unless you are paying money mm -hmm. uh, like if you put a link in your uh post they block it so that people can't see it um certain hashtags they watch and they block so people can't see it not because you're in avoidance of terms but they think if this person's trying to make money off of our site, they should pay or for the too, if they're going to leave the site. They don't want you to. Ever they don't want you to send you away from the site. But, so, like being clever about where you put your links and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in the comments, sometimes having other people make comments on your stuff, which then have a link. Yeah. Uh, making sure that every post that you do has people commenting because, like, they won't be seen without people commenting and. You can't just like, for instance, something on Facebook. You have to love it. You have to think it's funny. You have to whatever for the algorithm to actually kick in. So what is the algorithm is really the question of how you then manipulate said algorithm. And that will change. Uh, yeah, the answer is nobody knows how the <laughs> well, algorithm works. Even the yeah. even the companies don't know how their own algorithms work. Right, because it is all AI now. Well, the stuff different. that yeah, hits yeah. and the stuff that biffs is just anybody's guess. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I had controversy. I have Jesus and the devil smoking pot in my comic. And the comic that lit the internet on fire, people were just having flame wars and just arguments and it throw a line, was I had a comic about going to a life drawing class and we're sitting there looking at the model and I lean over to my friend who's just sitting there and I go, he's uncircumcised. <laughs> oh, oh, that's what that looks like. <laughs> People have opinions <laughs> about that. So that, um, I mean, that comic did well in that a lot of people commented mm -hmm. a lot. So, I mean, create buzz is also create controversy. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah, good. Good luck. Uh, 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 connect with people who mm -hmm. can share your stuff connect with people who can you know leave a comment and retweet mm -hmm. or you know pass it around you know try and be part of a community so that you can back them up and they'll back you up friends are the most valuable thing to have in any business but in this business they are indispensable um okay we're just about out of time so this has been awesome and uh, we're going to tell you guys all where to find us and stuff like that. So if you have further questions or want to come hang out or whatever, you can in the mm -hmm. show or on the internet. Bill. I'm on, I'm at table 313 at the Artist Alley. We are at table 430 in Artist Alley. Also, we have the postcards for uniques like we talked about. And then also really quick, 
we're running a panel that we're excited for called Let's Make an RPG. So we are going to be uh, making a character because we like Gondolfin. We we'll make a character together. <laughs> and then the audience will collectively role play that character through a short adventure. Uh, and we'll see if we can sort of crowd run a tabletop. Right. Action. We're going to draw it live and stab yep, that We'll be thing drawing live. the character mm -hmm. live. It's going to be right. a, a wild. I've got postcards. Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, TheDevilsPanties.com or pretty much any social media, Devil's Panties. And uh, if you don't know the artist, Ali, comic and pop artist Ali is in the America's Mart building two, floor right. four, and I'm on aisle 500. At Comfort and Adam. Uh, <laughs> www.kevinandkale.com. There we go. Thank you. See right. y'all later, guys. Please. Thank you so much. Hydrate. Go hydrate. Go hydrate. Go hydrate and sleep.